good morning, Lionhearts. It's your old pal Jordan the Lion. How are you all doing today? If you're looking behind me, you notice, hey, I might remember seeing this background before. That's right. We took a trip about a week ago to Ohio to visit my family. So we're staying with my grandpa. Unfortunately, once we came into town, kind of had to start out by going to a family funeral. But, uh, been hanging out with the family for the last couple of days, just bonding, enjoying each other. We haven't seen each other for over a year now because of COVID. And uh, today I'm gonna take off and go do a vlog. We're gonna meet up with Kevin, who does the um, theme songs for my show. He was in the band 84 Nash, and we're gonna head off to Louisville and make a video or two for you. I think you'll enjoy this, but before we go, we have to take Jaw for a walk. Days with Jordan the Lion, it begins right now. And of course we couldn't take a family trip without this family member. His family missed him and he missed them too. He's been having a blast, haven't you? You been having fun? We're going through Cincinnati and there's the football stadium right there. And they've covered up the bridge that we're gonna be going into. On the other side of this bridge, we will officially be in Kentucky. This is the Ohio-Kentucky border. Welcome to Kentucky, y'all. It's Florence, y'all. No, really, that's what it says. Entering downtown Louisville. Now what we're doing today is something that I have wanted to do since I was a little kid. There's the KFC Yum Center. Look at that. A big giant gold David. That's not what we came here looking for, but the big baseball bat behind it is. Hi, David. Oh, that is absolutely killer. I have wanted to come here as long as I've been playing baseball, which is a little squirt. I was probably four or five years old. I've loved baseball, and when I knew that players had their own bats and Louisville Slugger made them and you could have your name on there, I always wanted to come to this factory, and today we're gonna do it. So, Kevin, you guys have met before. He's been out to Los Angeles, and we went to a Dodger That's game right. together. And we also went to Joni Mitchell's house together, right. Chateau Marmont. I'm here visiting, and Kevin also is the voice of our theme song. When everybody says, hey, how'd you get Ozzy to sing your theme song? It's actually this guy, but he's also a massive baseball fan, and we decided to come check out the Louisville Slugger Museum yeah. and Factory. Yeah. Let's Have do you it. ever done this before? Never done this before. I've been to a game here, and no, I've never even been to a game here. I've walked by it, that's about it. This is your standing next to an exact scale replica of the model R43 34 inch wood bat design to specification requested by Babe Ruth in the early 1920s. The Bud Hellerich signature that appears with the famous oval logo is a tribute to the John A. Bud Hellerich who turned the company's first bat in 1884. That is great. The Babe Ruth model. One of the things that I'm really looking forward to is that after you take the tour, you can actually get your own bat with your signature on it, and I plan on doing that today. You can see some people already on the tour. Here's the great Duke Snyder here taking the tour, bat factory tour, and we just got our tickets. Look at this place. I am so excited. So check this out, this is the signature wall. And on this wall is pretty much everyone that's ever had a professional bat made here. Any player has their name and their signature. Let's see if we can see any that look familiar. Eddie Matthews. 
And you've got Ryan Sandberg and Benito Santiago. Bo Jackson. And there's Babe Ruth and Ty Cobb. And here you can see they're talking about how Jackie Robinson breaking in with the Montreal Royals when he signed his deal, his contract with Louisville Slugger in 46, he would officially break the color barrier in 47. We are starting our tour. Oh, look at that, a statue of Jackie Robinson. Oh, some statues of a couple of players. We got Jackie here, you can do a fun photo with. Or Babe Ruth. Ken Griffey Jr., this kid. My favorite player growing up. This is a and here's Derek Jeter. And Ted Williams. I actually went to kind of where he's buried. That was a crazy story, the whole Alcor thing, but look at that, Ted Williams kissing his bat. And Joe DiMaggio kissing his bat. And this is one of the bats that Joe DiMaggio used during his famous streak. One of three bats. It says someone stole bat number one in between the games. I'm surprised that didn't throw off the streak. He eventually got it back, and then he gave the second bat back to the Louisville Slugger plant. Don't worry, since I can't show you the whole tour, I have a way of helping you out with it. So, even though they do use trees to make these bats, they do care about the environmental impact. So they showed us that they have a forest in Pennsylvania, and they actually have a strict criteria for what trees they choose to use. The trees have to be 65 years old minimum. They have to be a certain uh, circumference around because they want to get a certain amount of bats out of each tree. So this shows them cutting them into 40 inch sections, which is what they'll end up cylindering out the, um, the billets that they're going to make the bats out of. Here they're checking the wood and the grain to make sure that it's going to be strong for the bats they're using. And they use different wood for player bats and different wood for retail bats. So this was the original company that started Louisville Slugger. This is six generations in, and here you'll see we're at the first stop, the billets. These are what the players choose to make their bats out of, and they even showed us that Ted Williams used to love and come and hand select the wood because it made him feel like a kid again. So imagine all of those will be player bats that will be eventually played baseball with. These are some of the players now that have orders in and they have a reference bat in each locker, basically, and the billets that were chosen to make the bats out of. And there's a local player, Tyler Stevenson. And there's the reference bat that they're going to work off of. And here's a picture of Joey Votto and Ted Williams. They said Joey Votto likes to select his bats from pictures over the phone. Here's a picture of Ted Williams with one of the owners here at the factory. And there are some of the billets, again, that Ted would have probably selected. And they show us that um, this bay that we're gonna look at right here, these are player signatures on the actual machine that makes the player bat. So anytime you see a player um, taking a photo with the machines or with his bats or anything here, it would have been taken right here at this machine at this bay. They have two going throughout the day and you can see all the names that have signed it. Today they're making bats for Vlad Guerrero Jr., Kristen Yelich, and Ronald Acuna. And there you can see one of the billets in their hole getting ready to be turned into a bat. There you can see it has those hoses to suck up the dust. And there she's showing us what the bat comes out looking like with the nub still at the end. And again, making player bats today. And they show former people that have been here. And like I said, those photos would have been taken right here at this station. And there are some of the completed bats before the nubs have been taken off. And there you can see the process of one being made right now. Kind of cool. Then also players are allowed to certain days out of the season customize, have different bats. So that was some of those customized bats. And here we're going off to the retail section with one of the original signs for the company. 
So here they make the retail bats, the bats that you can buy, player bats in stores. They, uh, they have these machines that make, it's a different quality of wood, but they're saying they can make up to 4,000 bats a day on these machines. All the wood shavings and sawdust are vacuumed through the yellow tubes that you see right there. And look at what they do with the excess sawdust. A turkey farmer recycles it into bedding for his birds. Thought that was great. So here you can just see as it's finished, it's working its way down the line. Pretty cool. So if you buy a bat in a sporting goods store, this is where it would have been made. And there she's showing us a completed bat with the nub still on it. And it's even had the logo burned into it already. And they do eventually trim those nubs off, of course. And there's a bat getting ready to be put into a bin where it can be taken to the next step. And there you see their quality controlled all right there before they move on. And there they have some of the completed bats that have been burned with the name and the logo and some that are packaged up and ready to go. Now the next stop was the branding where they put the Louisville Slugger logo on and the player names. There you can see they've got one in the machine right now and they're burning that name in. They said that if it's a player bat, they use water decal right there, which is a different Louisville Slugger logo than I remember growing up. But she's also showing how they choose to put the logo on is based on the strength of the wood in the bat. So the player swings, he'll connect or contact the ball on the straight grain lines, the strongest part of the bat. So that's how they do that. And then there she's showing how they do the foiling for the bats. And for players without a contract, instead of having a signature, they use block lettering. And there are some completed bats. And they're showing here how they put the paint in there in the grooves at the end for the player's name. If it's a black bat, there you can see that one's completed. And then here, he's actually burning in the Louisville Slugger logo right there in the center. You can see the smoke coming up off the machine right there. And then here off to the side, you can see that logo. And then here's a stack of bats that are being made for Kyle Schwarber. Then this section were defective bats that they're not going to allow to be made into bats, you can see. And then here they're showing us how they color the bats, which is a great process. And some of the old logos and some of the old historical people that use their bats. Now there you can see some have been dipped in silver and they're drying right now. And this guy is actually dipping all these bats to make them all black. So you can see most of our bats are dipped one at a time by hand. We can dip 400 bats an hour. And there he's putting two in the paint bin right now, but he takes them out one at a time and hangs them individually. Kind of a cool process to watch. I watched it for quite a while actually. I just, I love seeing this kind of stuff. And then of course, they have the pink bat for breast cancer awareness and they talk about how that came about from the owner here. Six generations of, into the family still own this. And there they're customizing the bats. And check this out. That bat right there has a taco on there. One of the players wanted the Louisville Slugger logo made into look like a taco. And so that's what that is. Kind of cool. And then as we finish up this part of the tour, well, the whole tour, they have nubs that you can take with you. So I went ahead and took one. I'll probably send it off to a fan or viewer or something, somebody that likes baseball. And as you go to the very last room, they have this sitting there where you get to choose a souvenir mini bat to take home with you. Great tour. And then the last stop, you get to see some of the notable people that have made Louisville Slugger famous in some of their pictures, ending with the babe. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed my version of the tour for you. As you saw, they wouldn't allow me to video it, but I think you guys got a, the gist of what goes on, and I hope it entices you to come take the tour for yourself. You get this free mini bat as a souvenir. Now we're back in the museum. Let's take a look at some of the historic memorabilia in here. I'm seeing some things from the, um, the era when women were playing baseball in the 40s, the whole League of Their Own era, and um, Looks like a Hammer and Hank Aaron bat over there. Oh yeah, see right here we have one of the uh, girls baseball league. 
jerseys for Illinois, Colleen. I know they show it in the movie, but can you imagine being a player and having to slide in that? Basically a dress. Holy cow. Here we have the Hank Aaron bat. As many of you may know, or if you're not a baseball fan, you don't know, Babe Ruth had the home run record for many, many years, and then Hank Aaron came out and beat that record. Dear Hank, you are a very good ball player, but if you come close to Babe Ruth's 714 home runs, I have a contract out on you. Over 700, and you can consider yourself punctured with a 22 shell, is what some of the mail that he got as he was approaching that record, as you can imagine. A lot of people didn't want to see that happen, but there it is. There's seven, number 700, the baseball bat that he hit that 700th home run with, and he even documented it with his signature saying that. There's a picture of Hank Aaron's contract with Louisville Slugger, which was also known originally as Hillerick and Bradsbury. Now check this out, we have Hank's size seven and one fourth cap, part of his uniform from the 1960s, soon after the Braves moved from Milwaukee to Atlanta. It says, in the late 1960s, the perennial all-star moved up to third place for all-time career home runs when he broke Mickey Mantle's record in 1969. He also finished fifth and third in the run for MVP in 1967 and 69. And then here they have the, I guess what would his signature that they burned into the bats, or into his bats, and it says, Hammer and Hank Aaron signed two contracts for Lugo Slugger bats, the first in 1952 and then again in 1971. Seen here is his signature branding plate for his bats made for the first contract. And then as I am a major Reds fan, this is a real honor for me to get to see. This is Johnny Bench, his 1972 Gold Glove. He was named National League's MVP for the second time in 1972. He also won this Gold Glove award, his fifth out of 10. This award goes to the best defensive players at each position in both the American and National League every season. No other catcher has won as many Gold Gloves while playing in the National League as Johnny Bench. And if you ask my grandpa, no better catcher ever to play the game, both defensively and offensively. Guy could hit like nobody's business. Nineteen seventy-two. There's Johnny Bench. And then this side is also amazing because this is also Johnny Bench's bats from one of them being the All-Star Game, the 1968 All-Star Game, making his Major League debut in 1967. Bench hit the ground running. The next season, he made the first of 14 All-Star appearances. So that signed bat up there is the one from that All-Star Game. He was also named Rookie of the Year. And then this bat is his final home run bat. How cool is that? From 1983, September 17th, 1983, my sister's birthday. Bench in his final home run with this bat. is 389th to be exact. Nearly 54,000 fans were in attendance in Riverfront Stadium. It's a lot for a catcher. And here's Johnny at the factory, weighing out his bat. A lot of the players would come and actually see their bats being made and they go to the same exact bay to see it being made that we saw today or you saw in the photos. Now these three bats are also Cincinnati Red historical bats. The one on the far left is Pete Rose's bat. He used this to smack his 2000th hit. Let's see if I can focus in there for you. The one next to it is another Johnny Bench bat. He used this one in 1970 and 71. And then here we have Joe Morgan's bat, who sadly passed away recently. Phenomenal second baseman. 
for the Reds, and he was also an MVP. Now this is kind of cool, as I told you on the tour, when they first started out the factory, before they were making bats, they made butter churns and bedposts and things, but during wartime, they converted their golf factory into making an MI carbine gun stock, or gun stocks for the, uh, for the war. This one's great, I just pulled this drawer out not knowing I should pull it out. And uh, I'm now realizing I should do that at every one of these. That is a Lou Gehrig end of his career game used bat. That's one of the great things, a lot of the Louisville Slugger bats, if they were historic in any way, if they didn't go to the Hall of Fame, they didn't get sold either, they would get donated back to Louisville Slugger. Look at that, 1940 photo, Lou Gehrig points to a bat he used in his 1936 AL MVP season. And there is one of his actual bats. That is so cool. And then the drawer right here beneath the Lou Gehrig bat is a Ty Cobb game used bat from 1906. And you can even see nails in there where if they got a split or something like that, they would put a nail to stop it from splitting anymore. Two, two nails in there. That is a heavily, heavily used bat. Game used. 1906. Holy cow, that's crazy. Then here in this case, we have a Dave Winfield bat up top. Hank Greenberg bat. Game used bat. They're all signed. Uh, John Myers and Larry Doby. So in this drawer, we have the very bottom, one of those pink custom-made breast cancer awareness bats that Alex Rodriguez, A-Rod, used in one of his games, probably for the Yankees. And then the great Mike Schmidt above that, Phillies legend. Then we have Mel Ott up here. And the very top one, kind of hard to read, but it's Home Run Baker. And Home Run Baker's bat is heavily, heavily, heavily used. Look at that. So this is an actual Honus Wagner worn jersey. His baseball card is one of the most expensive in the world. He was a star player for uh, the Pirates, but then eventually an instructor, coach, manager, all that. And here they have a, um, a decal bat one of his decal bats from 1915. That's how they would look back then if you had a, a deal with Louisville Slugger. And then they have his logo plate or his signature plate there as well. Now here they have two of the Louisville Slugger Silver Slugger Awards that the most excellent batters in the American and National League can win those each year. And there's the silver Roberto Clemente 1961 silver bat. And right in front of this section they have a Babe Ruth memorabilia section where they have one of his bats and that is um, the famous notch bat says, with this G76 bat, Babe Ruth hit the first 21 home runs of his record-breaking 60 of 1927. There you can see the signature, and it says that for each home run the great Bambino hit that season, he would make a notch above the Louisville Slugger logo, which you can see all those grooves up there. And the bat broke, Babe sent it back here to H&B with the note, I'm doing pretty well with this, make me more. And there's the crack in the back. Pretty cool, huh? And then here they have a letter from Babe Ruth. His signature. That was a letter to Louisville Slugger. Praising their bats for the power. And then there's one of his bat orders. And then his Louisville Slugger contract. 
And then this bat belongs to Shoeless Joe Jackson of the uh, Black Sox scandal, 1919, when the White Sox threw the World Series. He always claimed that he was never a part of it, and his stats even showed that it didn't seem like he was throwing any game either, but um, he was implicated in it and thrown out of baseball. Would have been a Hall of Famer. Here you can see his signature. Jackson. I believe he was one of the best in the game. I think it was, uh, I believe it was Babe Ruth that said that he modeled his swing after Shoeless Joe. There's Shoeless Joe there. And then after baseball, he ended up running a liquor store. And there he is. Greenville, South Carolina. This exhibit right here is to Pete Browning. He kind of is the one that got this all started because he was known as the Louisville Slugger. And Pete Browning got him to, got Bud Hillert to make the original bats. And then this section's a really cool thing that they have here in the museum, unlike anything else that you can imagine anywhere else. This whole wall are game used player bats and you can come over here and you can actually hold one of your favorite players game used game played game hit bats pretty cool i'm gonna do it so if you see all the names going across the top those special names up there are in this case so we can hold a ken griffey jr bat willie mays hank aaron Derek jeter frank robinson or johnny bench i'm going with griffey jr he was my favorite player they have this piece of rubber covering the grips that he would always put, but that is King Griffey Jr.'s bat. That is so freaking cool. Pretty cool. Holding Jr.'s bat, the kid. Look at that, pretty cool. Now I promised myself a Louisville Slugger bat with my name on it, and that's exactly what we're gonna do right now. Because just like this says, it's the perfect gift for any occasion, a gift to myself. So into the gift shop, we'll fill out the form and get a bat made. See how long it takes. So our form here has all the sizes and colors that we can choose from and our prices. I'm having a little bit of a problem because I really really like the Louisville Slugger, the classic logo and everything, but I kind of am a little bit torn because I like the H&B logo bats up there too, like the original before it was Louisville Slugger. So there's a part of me that kind of wants that, but I think I'm more torn on either a natural 34 inch bat or a black one with maybe silver or gold. I don't know. Tough decisions, man. So I just noticed over here in the personalized bats, you can also choose from this selection. And I'm gonna get a gold bat. Why not? So we decided on the gold bat. He's gonna add what I want to inscribe down as, and it'll be done in 30 minutes. Not that I'm gonna use that bat for playing, but those special ones, the custom bats from the floor, are playable as well. The ones behind the counter are more decorative. So wait till you see what I got for the inscription on our gold bat. And let's pick up some postcards. All right, let's go pick up our bat. What does that say? That says Jordan the Lion and Jaw. That is awesome. Finally got it. What a freaking great tour. I, to be honest, as much as I love Louisville Slugger Bats, I had no idea that this was the original name of the company and I had no idea how it all started. So this was a lot of fun. And now I have a really cool gold bat to display at our house. All right, my friends, we're gonna call it a day. I wanna thank Jessica Cook, Karen Voller, Leah Cameron, Vienna De La Garza, and Kim Fryholm for becoming my newest Patreons. Thank you all for watching. We'll see you next time. Have a great night from Louisville, Kentucky. Goodbye.